Welcome to today's uh, webinar with the topic Graphical Supported Transport Stacking with IDAT Stacker. My name is Stefan Langhans. I'm responsible for sales at, at IDAT um, and I will perform this webinar today. The duration is approximately 30 minutes and after I finish the webinar, um, I stay online for another couple of minutes. So if you have any questions, um, so you can use the, the chat window from the webinar software after the webinar and um, we can try to answer your questions directly. Good. As I said, topic today is transport stacking. Yeah, transport stacking in a, a precast uh, manufacturing plant is uh, yeah it's a it's a standard uh, um, uh, task what you have to do uh, and basically um, the most important thing why you do that is for sure to plan your logistics and transport of your panels to the construction site but beside that there are uh, some other areas of the workflow uh, which are affected may be affected from uh, these um, stacking uh, data. So for example, one example is um, if you have a, a pallet circulation plant, so maybe um, it is necessary for you to uh, produce the panels in the same order like you have it on the, on the stack. Another thing is um, with the uh, stacking sequence, you also give the sequence for the erection later. So um, yeah, in, in, the, in this way, uh, this work affects uh, several parts of the workflow in your company. So this important uh, process of transport stacking uh, is optimally supported from the IDAT Stacker program. The range of functions of IDAT Stacker includes support for common data formats for import and export. Also a graphical interface for safe and fast processing with uh, visual controls. The possibility of defining and outputting loading lists as well as the possibility of connection to external software such as, uh, for example, ERP systems. Good, let's have a look uh, to the user interface of this uh, program. So what you see here um, are four windows. The windows above are the input windows. So what you see here are the panels, what you have imported uh, to the software. Uh, this window on the lower right side is uh, the window where you work finally later on. And uh, this window here on the left side, on the lower left side, this is the graphical view on your stock. So. When I open our project, I have uh, prepared a project here with some double walls. So you see that uh, you have the panels visible in, those, in these two windows here. This is a view as a list. So you have the elements uh, listed here from element number one down to the last number, in this example, number 12 of um, these walls. And here in this window, this is the graphical window. If you have generated these files, for example, with uh, software like IDAT CCAT or IDAT Revit Precast, which are uh, 3D um, precast design programs, so then uh, the files what you export and import here, including uh, data uh, for the position of the element in the in the floor in the project so that means when you have so when you have the panels generated um, um, exported from there you have really the ground floor of the building here or the, the floor of the building here and you can work in this graphical window as well so further what we have here is uh, the the, um, visual, the visual uh, control of the stack and here you can choose from predefined stack devices. So for example, here we have this kind of A-frame 
what you can predefine, how you do that, I will show you later on. And now you can start loading panels to your uh, trailer or to your truck. You see, this is a double wall here with these uh, girders inside. Um, by the way, um, I don't have an example for the walls, but for the slabs, I can show you later. Even if you have outstanding reinforcement in a panel, for sure, this will be considered as well. Good. The software configuration, the configuration of these um, IDAT stacker or the stacker program itself can be adapted to your individual needs in a very comfortable and flexible way. So for this, we go back uh, to the software and we open the configuration file. I don't go here uh, too deep into detail because uh, this is uh, a lot of settings, what we can do here. It affects, for example, uh, how the software works at the import. You can define import uh, import path where the software is automatically, uh, automatically checking if files um, uh, located there and load it automatically. You can choose if these files should be deleted uh, during the import or not to prevent that you have uh, information double um, and so on. Also same things for export. Um, the, the views you can uh, define how big they are, which kind of uh, information should be shown and so on. Um, but uh, the, one of the most important and maybe for for this uh, webinar, the most visible thing uh, and easiest thing to um, describe is here this, the pre-definition uh, of the stack devices. So here I predefined seven of them. That means uh, we have uh, the, uh, the trailer number one. The name of it is horizontal, what means uh, it gives you an idea how the elements are located on this uh, trailer. It's horizontally, so that is for example, um, a trailer for slab transport. Here you have the dimensions, the length, the width, the height, and also the weight of the trailer itself and a maximum weight um, what the trailer can have. So this software also watch about maximum loads. So you will see that later on. If it is um, set to zero like here, so no check will, um, will be done. But uh, for example, here, this device number seven, it's an inloader, uh, vertical for wall transport, for example. And here you have a maximum weight of 30 tons minus the weight of the trailer itself. It's 1000. So you have a total um, load or a total weight, what you can load to this trailer of 29 tons. And this will be automatically um, checked during the stacking process. Good. Yeah, here um, again a small overview. Um, how, what kind of um, of trailers are available? These are some of them. There are some more. Um, what you can configure, but these are the most uh, uh, common ones. So this is the inloader. Um, the yeah, the, the horizontal uh, stack for slab transport, the A-frame, and vertical racks like this one and all are supported, are supported by the IDAT stacker. Good. Um, precondition to work inside IDAT stacker is that you can import panel data. And there are different options to do that. The first and for sure most um, uh, usable and most uh, comfortable option is if you have a software like IDAT Revit Precast or IDAT CCAT, because these programs are able to generate machine files. Machine files are normally electronic files which are generated for each panel, what can be used by machines in the factory, such as plotters or laser projection systems, or maybe steel cut and bending machines and, and so on. So they all have, uh, or most of them, the modern ones, they have an interface where you can feed data. And uh, these kind of files are able to uh, be used with this uh, technology, but also uh, our stacker is able to work with these data. 
So the same is for sure with other programs which are able to generate machine files such as Tecla, Planbar, Impact or others. Um, we are because this is a standardized uh, format, so everybody has to deliver data in the same format. So for sure we can use this um, data from that kind of software as well. For those who don't have such a software in use, uh, we also offer um, an Excel import. So that is for sure more um, an easy um, import that means with an Excel import, you are not able to use this graphical window over here because in an Excel file, you don't give any information about the position and uh, uh, orientation and direction of the panel. Um, you only give in an Excel file the um, dimensions, the weight and the panel number. But uh, you can uh, load this to an Excel file and uh, these uh, Excel uh, and these data from the Excel files will automatically import it in IDAT stack as well. Another option what we are working on at the moment, but this is almost finished, is doing the same uh, with DXF or DWG files. So this is um, for the clients who are doing still the design in 2D AutoCAD, for example. So what you can do, you can uh, use, a, for example, a shop drawing. Um, you can define the, the, um, the geometry, so the, the, the contour of the, of the panel there. You can subtract openings, for example. Uh, you can give a thickness and you can give a panel number and you can also import it on this way. Or there is an export developed by us um, where you can export from AutoCAD uh, this information to the Stacker program. And last but not least, we have the import from database systems like IDAT ERP or other ERP or database systems um, which are using information or panel-based um, information. So we can import uh, data from there as well as far as we have any information about geometry. This is the case in IDAT ERP. Um, in other systems, we have to check this. Good. Okay, so um, I, I will show you now uh, one workflow from the begin to the end, um, and it starts with the generation of data for the import in the stacker. And for this, I have um, an example here in our design program CCAT, what is based on AutoCAD architecture. I prepared um, a sample building where I have different kind of precast. I have uh, girder slabs, I have holocaust slabs, and I also have some walls. So in fact, I have sandwich walls outside. Here you see the three layers. This is a sandwich wall, and we have solid walls inside. All of that panels are fully um, already uh, um, um, designed. That means uh, there are reinforcement in, there are um, mount parts like lifting anchors and so on. Uh, everything is included. And then when I finish with that, I have here a command to generate machine files. So when I uh, choose this command, uh, the software is asking me about uh, walls or slabs, what I want to uh, export, and I export now the walls. And in a certain folder here, the software has generated these machine files. So, and now I can use or I can go to the stacker program, I open this project. So, and you see, so we can move that around a little bit. So you can see here, this is my, my building. And here is my list of panels, again, starting from segment number one, what is a solid slab. Um, and you see here, uh, segment number 15, here starts the sandwich. When you mouse over to these uh, panels, you get a window with the most important information um, like uh, uh, job number, element number, 
the dimensions and the thickness and area and so on. Um, the same is here. So what you prefer or from where you prefer to work, this is up to you. And uh, in this example for the walls, I would like to stack my sandwich panels in a inloader. So I choose this stack device. You remember one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the seven um, types of uh, of um, trailers what we uh, uh, defined here in the configuration. I, I choose that one. It will be loaded automatically. And now I can start loading the panels to the trailer. I can do that from here by a mouse click. So when I click to this panel, this panel will be loaded to the trailer. Uh, it will be loaded to the left side in front. If I want to change the position, so I can move the panel with this command here to the left, to the middle, to the right. And then I can um, click on the next one. This will be located now in this configuration beside the next panel. Um, if I want to have it in the same layer, so it's not a problem. So you see now we have two levels, so that means level one and level two. Um, if, I, if I want to have it in one level, so I bring that one at the end of the trailer and I drag and drop it over here and now I have it in one level. And if they should be located um, directly side by side, so I can here in this window adapt it, yeah, how I like it. Nice thing, you always have the visual control of the trailer and you also have the weight of the trailer here. So we, now we have 11.78 tons. Good. Um, I place the next one. This one, it's going to the middle. And another one, maybe this, in the next layer. So now we are around 25 tons. I'm quite sure that the next panel will uh, overload the trailer. So when I place the next one, you see um, it started, the software automatically started a new one because the, the, the other one um, reached the maximum um, weight. Good. Um, yeah, so one word to the, uh, to the window here. You see um, panels which are already stacked. They are um, in this light gray, so that means uh, they are not further available. They are already stacked. The same, uh, the, the blue ones here, these are the panels which are on the current, uh, uh, located on the current trailer and the dark gray ones, they are still available for stacking. Good, um, yeah, let me proceed here quickly. So for example, here for sure, I can also uh, um, do it from this list here. So, and it started the next one because the trailer was overloaded. So this one we can maybe bring to the same level. Okay, these are all my um, my sandwich panels and now I have left all the, the solid walls. For this, for example, I choose another trailer. So this is this A-frame and I proceed here. Um, you see at the A-frame, this window will be split here because uh, uh, this is um, showing one side. So this is the left side, the right side of the trailer. Um, you see when I move move it here, it will be only affect, it will only affect this side. And when I change something here, it only affects this side. You also have the, the weight here. Um, by the way, 
what you see here in this uh, in this list is also you see the, uh, the 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 panel and in the background you see the dimension of the trailer what's happened here this um this um, panel is bigger than the trailer now you have two options um first option is you choose another type of trailer for this um, element or if it is possible you can load it it stands a little bit outside here and the nice thing is uh, if there is any problem with the dimension it will be marked in yellow here um, it doesn't mean that you cannot do it you can do it but it gives you a visual um, um, information that in that area you have to check uh, if it works or not so okay let me quickly do that load this trailer and this one and this is the last one by the way uh, here it is also uh, if i want to move this panel to this side it's also uh, by drag and drop so this is uh, quite easy handling good Yeah, that is uh, that is the way to import data into Stacker and to to do the stacking itself. Now, after you did that, for sure you need to export the information again uh, to the uh, to the further workflow, and that means um, what kind of options you have for that. First of all. Um, if you have an import with the machine files, for sure you can export it in the same format as well. That means when you export this information as a machine file, what you can do here over the export functions with this Unitechnic or PXML um, export, then the software is generating these machine files again with basically the same information like, uh, like it had at the import. The additional information is um, in which uh, stack and in which position this panel is located. Um, a second option uh, to export data is about printouts. So what you can do from the system is you can print reports. Um, so there are plenty of different layouts for supports and uh, important to understand is this is nothing what we what we deliver with the software so uh, but this is something what you can uh, define by yourself the layout of these lists i give you two examples there is a simple list um, what means here are by the way these are all the the trailers so we we loaded eight, eight trailers as well uh, eight trailers at all and um, oh, I choose I choose the wrong printer I think sorry Could be this one Ah, sorry, there is a problem with my printer driver now. Let's try it again. Yeah, okay. So here, this is an example of an export uh, with a graphical information. So here, this is a loading list where you have information about the, the date um, where you made this uh, uh, this stack, the job number, the story, for, uh, if, if available, which type of uh, trailer it is, um, and which trailer or truck number. So this is the first uh, trailer of eight. Here you have a top view on it. This is one of the inloaders. Uh, you see from the top um, uh, uh, perspective and you see 
here we have the panel number 15, 16, 21, and 22. And here uh, you have a list um, about level, what means this is level one, level two, level three. Um, and here you have the element numbers with some details. What kind of details are shown here? In which, uh, in which way? This is completely up to you. This is only one example. This is the, the second one. Um, and uh, here we have an, another example. This is the A-frame, also a top view with the list below. But again, it's only an example. So this is um, the second way to export data from Stacker. And for sure, um, we also can uh, low, uh, can export data uh, to the database um, or ERP program again, um, because this software then uh, needs it uh, to handle, for example, the stockyard, the element stock in the um, in the factory, or um, later to give this information to the people who have to load trailers to trucks or whatever. So that is um, that is the uh, ERP or database export. Um, yeah, what is also available. Good. Um, now here we had the example how it works with walls. Uh, for sure, we can do that with slabs as well. This is something I also show you quickly. So uh, it's it's working exactly the same way. You need to export or you need to generate uh, data in some way. Uh, what you can import to the uh, to the stacker. In this case, we do, do it again with these machine files. I generate them, and I go back to my project. I open these now. So, and you see here again, this is my list and my uh, my graphical window where I can see my floor. When you compare it here to the AutoCAD, you see this is my model and uh, you have the, the floor uh, panels you have here. And yeah, then I choose, for example, these uh, horizontal uh, stack. This is now to place the um, the girder slabs. So for the girder slabs, I maybe start with this plate. You see, it will be located on the trailer. Um, if it is smaller, I can move it around as well. So in this case, it fits very good. Um, I put on the second one. There is a smaller one. The software is putting that on the side, but for sure, you can move that around as well if you want to have it in the middle or for sure you can place it wherever you like so in this position it's outstanding here and you see it immediately changes to yellow because here you have some parts standing out of the trailer by the way um these uh, red columns here uh, these are the, um, this gives you the information about the maximum height of the um, of the trailer. You can see that later on when we stack the Holocaust labs. So, okay, if that trailer is uh, finished, then you go to the next one. I do that quickly here. So that is the next one. Here we have smaller uh, segments. You see that the software automatically plays that um, in the same layer if there is enough space. By the way, what you also can see here, this is what I told you before. Um, here we have some outstanding reinforcement here in this area. And you see that the software has considered that uh, here it gives that space um, that you don't have any collisions um, later on here. So, okay, I proceed 
with these labs here. So these are all my, my, my Goethe labs. And for the Holocaust labs, I show you another stack device, what we call adaptive. Adaptive is not really a rack. Uh, adaptive means, for example, Holocaust labs, sometimes you stack without any trailer or something like this. You stack one um, one uh, slab element above the other. Um, and for this, we have this adaptive um, uh, trailer. That means the trailer, uh, the, the dimension of the trailer is taken from the first panel what you put on here. So you see, I choose that and the dimension was uh, uh, changed to the dimension that this part fits on it. And now you can stack it easily. And you see when I reach the maximum height, So when I reach the maximum height, it starts again a new one because uh, this is only a, also a limitation what uh, the software is uh, taking care that you're not going bigger than allowed. Good, okay. Um, yeah, I do it. I start with another panel from here. And for sure, this, for example, you can now bring to the front. This is behind. Again. So that is your next. But for sure, you can also um, use the list over here. So this is also a, a quick way if you have, uh, okay, so. I think these two we have left. No, only one. Okay. Good. So again here, I have the export and print options. So there is a list for slabs. So that is an example for such a stacking list um, or loading list for the slabs. So uh, truck or trailer one, the element numbers and additional information and so on. Good, that was a quick overview about um, the software IDAT stacker. 